test, test.
Good afternoon. Welcome to this, the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. As we continue our Easter journey, may we immerse ourselves in the gift of divine mercy for ourselves and for the whole world for the sake of our Lord's sorrowful passion. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of our Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather today to benefit from the divine mercy of God for ourselves and for all we shall pray for believing strongly in that perfect mercy of God to make ourselves worthy to celebrate the Holy Mass let us call to mind our sins and ask God for forgiveness I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my word, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for the Lord, for the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for a great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of your Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. 
You are seated at the right hand of your Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of our Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. The response to the psalm, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Thanks to the Lord for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His steadfast love endures forever. Thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. The word of the Lord.
your blessing, Father. May Almighty God be your lips and in your hearts and bless you worthily to proclaim his gospel in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was evening on the day Jesus rose from the dead, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> when we say, I doubt it, are we saying, I do not believe? Or, I'll believe it when I see it. Our doubting should lead us to questioning. And by questioning, we will arrive at the truth. You see, we have a tendency to refer to Thomas as doubting Thomas. Because of the doubt he had of the other disciples claiming that Jesus appeared to them a week ago. Is this a fair assumption? Is this fair for Thomas? But Thomas, you know, poor Thomas. He wasn't with him the first time. I mean, um, poor Thomas, he's a doubter, right? <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't believe someone just raised himself from the dead? That's normal, isn't it? Why would anyone doubt that? Why would anyone look at a group of people who claim they saw it happen 
and need slightly more evidence to believe. We might ask why Thomas wasn't with them the first time Jesus appeared. We don't know, and there's no account written. Therefore, Thomas could have been wandering through Jerusalem, talking about the tragedy of the crucifixion of his friend Jesus. He could have been looking for answers, or just wailing in shock, trying to piece everything together. Thomas said he refused to believe unless he saw the holes in Jesus' hands. You will notice Thomas says that because that is exactly what Jesus did for the other disciples. In the beginning of our gospel this evening, when the, diple, when the disciples were together, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Notice, though, the disciples do not believe it's Christ until he reveals himself to them. Yet they criticize Thomas for asking this, for the same revelation. Can you imagine the man you followed for three years dies tragically and you are lost and confused and don't really understand what's going on? You thought he was the Messiah, but maybe you were wrong. Maybe you were deceived somehow. All of us at one time or another, have doubts about our faith. It could be from the aftermath of a tragic event, the sheerness of the vast universe, and how we are a tiny part of it. Doesn't you ever stop and think about that? And how we fit into it? We may question if there is life after death. We may have read some books that attempt to dispel our faith, such as the Da Vinci Code, or other articles that try to debunk Christianity. And how often do we read the Bible with some doubt? Doesn't it seem reasonable that we too might have questions about a God we have never seen face to face? Doesn't it seem reasonable that we would need to experience the God of the Word before we can learn to trust the God of the Word. Over and over in the Bible, God reveals himself to people through miracles and prophecy. He predicts what is going to happen before it happens so we can know he is God. He is such a caring God that he never expects us to believe in him without first giving us a revelation of who he is. So why can't we give ourselves and our fellow brothers and sisters the same grace? Questions can be the very thing God uses to show us who he is. I just want to say, if your heart is bent towards knowing Christ, your questions will never hinder you from knowing him. He is the answer to everything we worry and wonder about. All you need to do is ask. Asking doesn't make us doubters. It makes us children of God, like a child seeking out truth from the heart of their father. Nothing could please God more than having a child turn to him with their questions instead of turning to the world. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Does that radiate with you? Does that touch your heart in some special way? Today is also Divine Mercy Sunday, the eighth day of the Feast of Easter, in which St. John Paul II said that we receive the Easter gift. It is a special gift of the total forgiveness of all sins and punishment that the Catholic Church offers in the form of a plenary indulgence today. You might ask, what sets this day apart from any other day? 
Well, today is the octave day of Easter, the last day of the world's greatest feast. And shouldn't the world's greatest feast offer the world's greatest gift? The total forgiveness of all sins and punishment, or in other words, a straight ticket to heaven. If we should die today in this perfect state of sanctifying grace, we immediately ascend into heaven. In 1931, our Lord granted a vision to St. Faustina with two rays emanating from his heart, one red and the other pale. As she gazed intently at him, he said to her, paint an image according to the pattern you see with the signature, Jesus, I trust in you. Then he said, I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon the souls who approach the font of my mercy. The soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sin and punishment. On that day, all the divine floodgates through which graces flow are open. And this comes from St. Faustina's diary. How do we celebrate the Feast of Mercy? It was clarified by the words of our Lord to St. Faustina. Firstly, we are to prepare with a novena of chaplets starting on Good Friday. That has been accomplished in our parish. Every day since Good Friday, we've had a group of people coming in here to serve that purpose, and not just for themselves, but for the entire parish community. Second of all, we are to be purified by the Tribunal of Mercy the Sacrament of Reconciliation. Now the Church teaches that we must go to confession before receiving Holy Communion. If you have gone to confession but have fallen back into venial sin, you should make a perfect act of contrition before receiving Holy Communion. The Church also states that missing Sunday Mass without good reason may be a serious sin. So if you have been missing Sunday Mass, why not get a brand new start in life today? Thirdly, we are to venerate the sacred image in the merciful Savior by gazing upon it as a reminder to trust Jesus and be merciful. Fourth, we are to perform some works of mercy to others. From our first reading this evening from the Acts of the Apostles, it calls our attention to the corporal works of mercy, feed the hungry, clothe the naked, shelter the homeless, and so on. And through the goodness of those disciples, they sold everything they had in order to fulfill this act of mercy. From the second letter of St. John's letter, or the second reading of St. John's letter, focuses on what are called the spiritual works of mercy, such as converting the sinner, counseling the doubtful, and bear wrongs patiently. By doing those things, we fulfill Christ's commandments and help to extend his victory. Whoever is begotten by God conquers the world, and the victory that conquers the world is our faith. And as we look around this evening, yes, we've been reduced. We're down to 15%. But we are less than 15% this evening with our attendance. And some people are getting very frustrated, and rightfully so, during the They're turning to the streaming services or watching Mass on TV, which is fine because our bishop has given us that disposition. But how many? people 
can we go out and save in this act of mercy, to reach out to them and to let them know that they're missed in the church. Let them know that there's always a place for them. You know, it's very easy for us to go out and do those other corporal acts of mercies of taking care of the poor. But what about the poor in spirit? Are they calling out and we're not hearing? Maybe it's time we listen just a little bit harder and help them. The fifth item is, we are to seal and ratify the covenant of mercy by receiving Holy Communion. And thus, we'll be doing that very soon. This day is a day of new purification, new beginnings, like a new baptism. It's giving us a clean slate, a fresh start in our faith. And if we were trying to figure out or remember how we could uh, remember the, these points of the acts of mercy, they've simplified it with an ABC. A, ask for his mercy. B, be merciful. And C, completely trust in Jesus. Today, our hearts shout to the heavens on the solemnity of divine mercy on this eighth day of the Easter octave, our hearts shout, Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Jesus, I trust in you. Amen. Now, let us, from our seats, take some time to venerate and reflect on the image of the divine mercy. Let us rise and profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at right hand, God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in the divine mercy of God, we pray to God our Father. We pray for people living with doubt, praying for restoration of their faith in God and his power. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Christians being persecuted and martyred for their faith, seeking peace and strength in their trials. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who seek the Lord, that they may be true instruments of his divine mercy through prayer and charity for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those welcome into our community, bearing witness to the life that is offered to us in Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, awaiting fulfillment of the promises of Easter, and for those who mourn their loss, may they be comforted with peace and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Listen favorably to our prayers, O Lord, 
and help us to benefit from your divine mercy. As we continue to live our lives, may we give glory to your holy name, through same Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Amen. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with Pascal joy, every land, every people exult in your presence. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together in the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Is an in the highest. Let us see you in the name of the Lord. Is an in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, 
he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, the first of resurrection. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out and spread throughout the world and bring out to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Ronald Peter our Bishop, Joseph his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of our Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Lamb of God,
Behold him. The Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Uh, for the reception of the Holy Communion. Um, I'm starting from St. Benedict and um, Catherine. Then I'll go to St. Gabriel and St. Francis. The King Joe will start with St. Dominic and um, Elizabeth. From there, he will come to St. Augustine and St. Helene. So please just be patient with us. And when we receive, let us uh, put the body of Christ in our mouths before we leave the presence of the deacon or the priest. Just to be careful when we do that and be patient for one another. Thank you.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before the final blessing, uh, please, just to remind us, that reservation is every week. You have to go make reservation for next week uh, just because of the change that we have. We have just 15% to come in. You can see that even in our midst. Okay. So uh, let us try as much as possible to do that by Monday, you'll be able to uh, make the reservation between Monday and Thursday. So the, by Friday or late Thursday, the secretaries will be able to um, confirm to you. And at the same time, if you do not get your confirmation later is by Friday uh, afternoon, then you can get in touch with the secretaries, just call, uh, or you send email, uh, they will respond to that. And also, if you don't get these, probably we have reached the required number, the required 15%. If we have reached that number, then um, the secretaries may be able to tell you there is still room at 8.30 mass or room at 11 o'clock mass. So if you want to, you can join that. Uh, but at the same time, we would be having the live streaming um, at 8.30 in the morning. Today, we are fortunate to have that. Those who are at home may watch now. But our plan is to have it at 8.30 in the morning. If we are able to resolve everything, then we can even have it 5 o'clock and um, 8.30 in the morning. But for now, because we are still managing uh, what we have, so 8.30 in the morning, in case you are not able to join uh, the, 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 the mass in person, you can watch uh, online. Just go to the website and you will find it there then we should please try. This time around, I'm happy this evening we don't have walking. So we should try as much as possible. If we do not register or make reservation, let us just watch on the uh, website because we have to be very careful during this time around. Don't just appear. Don't just appear. So if you have that reservation, that is okay. So please let us put that in mind. Then the envelopes. Some of us, we need our envelopes and we have not got the envelopes. At the end of the Mass, as you are going out, um, at the Nathex there, um, the ushers will give you your envelope if you ask them. And if your envelope is not there, please um, let them put down your name so that I can give to the secretary. The problem is still about working from home. That's uh, the pandemic as well. So when you, if you don't have your envelope, give them your name, and I can get in touch with the secretary. Um, then we have on the website as well, just to remind us, the journey, the Easter journey. We had the lengthening journey, now the Easter journey together where we share the Bible together. For those who are willing to join, go on the website, you see the risen Lord, click on it. All you need to, pre to provide is your name and your email. So they will use that to um, invite you for the Zoom get together where we share the Bible together. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, remain and abide with you now and forevermore.
Go in peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.